Blog Talk Radio, the world's largest online radio network. Hello, I'm uh, Paula Begon, the cosmetics cop, keeping you beautifully informed on Blog Talk Radio every Thursday evening live in Seattle, except I'm, I'm not in Seattle right now. I'm in uh, the south of France. And uh, it's snowing in Seattle, so Desiree, uh, my producer and assistant, and Brian Barron, my co-writer and alter ego, are sitting there freezing and hating me. Hi, Brian and Desiree. Hello. Hello. The sun actually has peeked its head out for the last couple hours, but yes, it has been snowing recently, which is just ridiculous. This is April, isn't it? And hailing. somebody. I got an email from somebody showing me pictures of, like, Hail, you know, like snow and sleet, really? I know. Needless to say, we're a little bit jealous of where you are right now. <laughs> okay. You know, I, I'm here and I'm jealous of me. I it's 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 not it's not cold. Actually they're having a bit of a the south of France here is actually having a warm spell. This is like unseasonable weather, uh, for them. It's been in I mean it is, it's picture perfect weather. It's been in the low 70s and, uh, you know, high 50s, low 60s at night. I mean, it's perfect, and it's gorgeous, and the sun is out, and it's the Mediterranean, for gosh sakes. Oh, my gosh. And and I told, uh, who who was I saying this to? Desiree, it was you or Brian. I said, because I, I write travel logs back to the office and to my family, and I said, this trip is going to be called Death by French Cooking. I mean, I, I got it. Just one thing. I got to tell you what I, what the appetizer I had tonight. And I know this is so off the diet. We talked about, about getting in. I <laughs> can't believe I ate this. So it pate. This is, it's, it's duck pate foie gras. And they served it with white onion ice cream. And, wow. and, I know. Who even thinks of putting onion into ice cream? It was. I, I that. Believe, I was incredible. It was. Oh, and also with some. Um, they made this kind of jam out of figs and apricot and something else. And you know, I I often ask, you know, what what is it they're serving? And I could get most of what they're saying, but you know, you don't want to ask too many times. You just want to get to the eating. But oh, white onion ice cream this was a brilliant idea but separate from separate from being in france and by the way i got to tell you whatever and, and it's not that french women aren't gorgeous french women are well, women all over the world are gorgeous but the women sunning themselves i mean i don't think i think i must be the only person wearing sunscreen of course i'm exaggerating in all of the south of france I, they're just, it isn't even that warm out, and they're sitting half naked, just all out in the sun. In fact, there were these three women on the beach wearing visors, and but they were naked and staring up in the sun. What was that? <laughs> what was that about? I wanted to go up and say, here's some sunscreen. It's called Paula's Choice, but I behaved, I behaved myself. I was, I was, I was good. I was just sitting there dumbfounded. So, but what we're going to talk about tonight separate from my being all the way half around the world. By the way, I, I it's what time is it here? It's three AM. It's three AM in the uh. morning. I know I am am I, I am dedicated to my listeners or I am a, a lunatic. And probably a little of both. I'm dedicated to my listeners and I'm a lunatic. But it is. It's three AM in the morning and uh and but it's it's nice and quiet. I've been getting some writing done. I've been uh, doing some research and uh, yeah, actually, you know, one of the things I was doing research on that we're going to talk about in a few minutes is uh, uh, dermatologists are just a buzz and plastic surgeons about this new procedure uh, called Ulcera uh, that that we'll talk about in 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 just a second. But um, so this is the topic. This is a topic near and dear. Uh, to my heart, as I am slowly but surely over the next few months approaching 58, is uh, dermatology procedures, uh, treatments that put off having to have plastic surgery. Now, I am absolutely going to have plastic surgery. There is no doubt about it. It is coming. I would like to put it off as long as possible because I'm nervous about 
getting cut and pasted. I just, it is not like I wake up in the morning thinking, I can't wait to go and get my skin cut off and patched back together. I have no Frankenstein-like wishes in my life. In fact, women who get plastic, there's a website called, and actually, it, it's actually a really good website called, uh, Brian and Desiree, have you heard of this website called Yes, They're Fake? Do you know that website? No. no. What, what is, is it? it? I usually have fun looking at awfulplasticsurgery.com. <laughs> Actually, you know, doing research for this show, i got to tell you with fun, um, well, doing research for all these shows, but yesthey'refake.net, actually. It's yesthey'refake.net. And it's, it's about this woman, uh, primarily this woman, who has just done it all. I mean, I don't know what she hasn't had done. She's had... Dermal filler is injected under her eye, which is actually a kind of risky procedure. It's not a very typically done procedure. I mean, she's had it all, I, and, and she's a very busy woman. And I, I haven't read much about her, but her information, both from a technical point of view and from a personal point of view, is actually pretty, uh, pretty complete. I mean, it's, it's, it's relatively objective and personalized at the same time, which Given this topic, it's, it's actually a, a lot of cosmetic corrective procedures is part art, art, part opinion, and part science, which is some of what makes this topic so, so tricky and so complicated for women. And it makes it complicated for me, and this is what I do for a living. I research, uh, I research these topics, and one of the things about getting procedures that put off plastic surgery is that they have their own problems as well. They're not perfect. Nothing out there to make us look younger is perfect. If it was, nobody would get older. We wouldn't eventually end up. Well, I don't even want to think about it. I'm never going to go to that end point. But you get my drift. So here's what I want you to know. The, the first thing is that I'm giving you really, in essence, the five uh, experiences I've had, supported by research and supported by physicians I've interviewed, about what really works in terms of looking younger, looking healthier, looking less beat up, than if, than if, and foregoing plastic surgery for a while, because. It is going to sag. The lids are going to droop. You can put it off for so long. I mean, actually, I'm not telling anybody to go get cosmetic corrective procedures or go get facelifts, but in terms of getting the results that you want, I mean, you know what the problem is, is we're living so much longer. None of us were supposed to be around here much past what? I mean, our age range, I mean, over the past few hundred years, we weren't even supposed to make it to 60. And now a lot of us are making it all the way well into our 80s and, you know, 90s. And it just is your personal decision of how you want to get there. And this is what I know. Or how you want to look when you do get there. <laughs> right. Because personally, I would like to drive up in a limo, but I get the feeling I'm going to be using one of those cars. But nonetheless, what the what the uh, what the goal is is to understand what you can do, and to be realistic about it. And you know, I was looking over um, our um, and and I and I take full responsibility for this because I review our little blurbs that we send out about our our radio topic our blog talk radio topic, keeping you beautifully informed. And as a cosmetics cop, as I looked at what we wrote and what I, and what I wrote, is that I, I sounded way too, um, way too positive. Watch out for any doctor or me or anybody else being way too positive about any one procedure because it, or any one doctor being the best or anything being the best. There's a lot of stuff out there. I'm giving you general categories, and then it comes down to the art and the talent of the physician, some amount of opinion and some amount of research, and that's what I'm going to give you. So we're going to start at the top with what is the most popular cosmetic corrective procedure 
uh, and that's Botox. And the reason, I mean, millions, I think in the United States alone, over four or five million, four and a half million, give or take a million injections of Botox were done last year. I mean, that's, that's, a, that's astounding, that, especially when you consider that for most people, it lasts anywhere between four months and a year. That's a lot of people getting Botox. And the reason they get Botox is because it works. It works. For, now, not for everybody. There are a number of people who actually don't get any results. The results don't. Actually, you know, Brian and Desiree, it's kind of interesting. My sister, Avis, who got Botox, hers went away after a, a month. She got oh. improved not, uh, uh, to go through all that, and it didn't last on her. So now it's rare. Most people it does take and take very well. It does erase the, I mean, literally erase. There's no question about it. It erases the lines on the forehead. It doesn't erase the when you get it shot, the, the shots around the corners of your eyes for the crow's feet, it, it doesn't, depending on how deep they are and how deep you smile, it doesn't smooth them out uh, quite the way I would like them to be. It's not like my forehead. Um, and depending on how deep the lines are between your eyebrows, you might also have to get dermal fillers in there because Botox might not be able to smooth them out again quite like how you would like. But Botox, you get it done, bye-bye, they're gone. Paula, there's, there's, a, there's also a much, much higher level of caution is needed when Botox is being injected around the eyes. They, they can't be as, they can't be as uh, quote-unquote, freewheeling with it as they might be on the forehead. Well, hopefully you're not seeing any doctor who is too freewheeling, but yes, it, uh, the eye area, I mean, you've got to see, a, you know, you don't go for the one that's advertising a sale on Botox. Or free you know, champagne you, during your procedure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let, let's make sure that that's not high on the list of criteria. But it's, uh, yeah, definitely when you're getting uh, it done around the eyes. Well, you know, the injection technique is is really, really important. I remember once seeing a, a doctor, uh, and he was bragging about his technique of doing it intermuscle, and he was just going to do one shot in one area. And I watched him do it, and then he, I went back to see how, not on myself, on, some, on a series of patients, and then he was showing me the results a week later or something like that. This was a while ago. And I thought the results looked bad. I thought it kind of looked cockeyed. It didn't look even. It, it didn't look as smooth as when you get a series of injections along the forehead. Now, I'm not a dermatologist. I'm not saying I know how to how to, well, I mean, I go to these seminars and I do the research, but I'm not saying that uh, there is one absolute way to do it. But in terms of research, there definitely is this technique where there are several injections along different points of the forehead and around the eyes, and particularly at junct- at a, a over a corner of the eyebrow that can actually give you a, a lift kind of look to the back of the eye. Botox is something. It is something to consider there are risks. Of course, there's risks. Uh, the problems with uh, the initial stuff about, um, you know, injecting it wrong and getting drooping, it's the rare occasion. But to say that it doesn't happen, of course, that wouldn't be true. But it is rare. It's, it's rare. And when you do have it done, it, I mean, it is, yeah. Okay, I'm done, Bragg. I'm done carrying on about Botox. I haven't lifted my eyebrows in 11 years. Okay, so the that because that's what Botox does is it prevents muscle movement uh, where it gets injected. The next one is is dermal fillers. There are over by some estimates 128 dermal fillers. Now dermal fillers are injectable materials, some synthetic, some natural. Uh, some naturally derived, some that they, you know, fat grafting that they take from your body. They've got all kinds of names, perlane, hyaluron, um, uh, radius, uh, uh, juvederm. I mean, sculpture, there, there, there's names of these things on and on and on. 
there there isn't a perfect filler. There are some, most doctors are very fond of Juvederm, Radius, Hyaluron, Perlon, Perlane, uh, and Sculpture. You, you hear those a lot. They're the, some of the most popular ones in the United States. And then there are a handful of doctors that do uh, uh, what they, those, the ones I just mentioned, the Juvederms and the Radius, the difference between the different fillers is that some are natural and some are synthetic or naturally derived. The naturally derived ones and the natural, well, they, they actually aren't natural, natural. They're naturally derived. Uh, uh, have the least risk of causing allergic reaction or sensitization. Uh, the results are good. You don't get granulomas if you granule little lumps under the skin. If you do get granulomas, these little lumps, they go away because one of the things about these quote-unquote natural fillers is they don't last all that long. I mean, they last. Some people would say between six months to 18 months. Some make claims of two years. Almost everybody argues about those numbers because some of it is how long they last. It has to do with how deep your lines are, how much you use your face, how healthy you are, all, all kinds of things contribute to how long dermal fillers last. But for the what they call the nasal labial folds, which are the smile lines that run from your nose to your mouth, the marionette lines that make your corners of your mouth look like they're drooping, that pull down your corners of your lips down, the, the marionette lines, and the lines between the brows, absolutely dermal fillers work, and they work immediately. Now, some of it is you leave. I, now, I, I have had fillers. Uh, I have had synthetic fillers uh, two, two, two different times um, over 10 years because synthetic fillers last. They have higher risks because they do last. They don't go away. Um, and actually, you get improving results with them as, as time goes. Um, but they're riskier. They're by far the riskier because if you do have a problem like a granuloma, the doctor doesn't inject it quite right. It's a, something they've done wrong. It's it's a problem to get rid of it. So most doctors really love these naturally derived uh, fillers. They love them because if there's a problem, you don't hate them for that long, uh, and they do work. They're safer. So that kind of a decision is one of those ones that is about the creativity and the skill of your physician. It isn't about you going in saying, oh, I heard Hyaluron's the best thing. It's, it's not. It is one of the many great options that are out there. And depending on how deep your lines are, your skin tone, the amount of sun damage, I mean, there's so many factors that a skilled dermatologist would have to make a decision on. There isn't one best. So we got to let go of that. Don't read something in a fashion magazine or some celebrity had this and then call up a dermatologist and say, do you do this procedure? It, it's just, it, don't do that one because especially in the world of, you know, Botox, there's only really one Botox and there's Dysport, but not many people are using uh, Dysport. It's still in trials, right? They haven't, Brian, have they approved Dysport? Am I just like blanking out here? Um. You know, I, I can look that up. I don't I don't recall seeing an official approval of it, only that seeing yeah. that it was poised for approval. Can you take a quick look? Dysport is um is uh trying to get approval or if they have I'm not exactly sure to compete uh with uh with Botox. Uh some doctors have been involved with the trials. They some of them are nuts about Dysport, some aren't. That's one of those things where it's, it really is about opinion and art sometimes more than science because both work. Both work. There is some talk that this port might last longer. Oh, yeah. which of it, course, was, it, was, it was approved in uh, the summer of 2009. Oh, it's been around that long. Yeah. You know, you don't hear many doctors doing it. You know, we, we need to have... You know, we're Leslie Bauman, who wrote a book called Skin Type Solutions, who we just adore. Um, she's going to be on in – when is she going to be on, Desiree? April 21st. April 21st. Oh, she's going to be soon. We'll have Two to weeks from her. tonight. Very exciting. Oh, yay, Dr. Bauman. She's wonderful. She's uh, a – well, well, we'll carry on about Dr. Bauman later. But she uh, – we'll have to ask her – because she has strong feelings about Dysport uh, – so we'll have to ask her about why she's a fan of Dysport versus uh, 
versus Botox. The third thing is, um, is getting rid of brown spots. Now, there's a lot of machines out there, particularly what they call IPL, intense pulse laser. And now people are making claims about intense pulse labor, laser as tightening skin. I wouldn't get too excited about seeing a big difference in your skin from an intense pulse laser, but in terms of brown discolorations, they call it photo rejuvenation. You do get some tightening, but mostly what you get is improvement in brown discolorations. And those brown discolorations, those sun damaged spots that a lot we used to call liver spots, um, are damaged brown discolorations from the sun, and getting rid of them is, is, isn't easy. For you know, two to four percent hydroquinone. I mean, we that, that that skincare product. So we'll leave that off right now. But without question, an IPL makes a huge difference. But when you look a little bit more at the research, uh, IPL has no downtime. There's no minimal risk. You, you might the occasional bruising, but not not really. But the one that literally zaps. You know, just you know, zaps these little brown suckers off of your hands and and face is what they call the Q switched ND YAG laser. And again, you don't want to, you know, you want a doctor who has a few machines to choose from, takes a look at what's going on with your skin and your hands, and makes your face and makes a decision and helps you understand what your best options are, but by far, IPL, intense pulse laser, and this Q-switch YAG laser, among others, is really considered state-of-the-art for zapping the brown spots and then, of course, religious use of the sunscreen and considering a hydroquinone-based product, it just, it doesn't get, it's about the best you're going to do out there. And then I wanted to talk about um, some of the deeper uh, laser machine, light machines that are out there to tighten, to l really firm, well, how much firming, of course, is relative. If your skin is hanging down around your neck, it's limita there's limitations as to how much it's going to get back up to where you want it to be. However, where Thermage used to get a lot of attention for, uh, which is a radio frequency, wait, Thermage is a radio frequency or an ultrasound? Oh, God, I'm blanking out. Brian, save me. Thermage, are you looking it up? Do I hear you typing? Thermage? Is that? You're, is you're it radio frequency or ultrasound? I can't remember. Thermage, okay, Brian, is radio, Thermage is radio frequency. Oh, I was right. Okay. Oh, I feel so much better now. All right. So my, my brain isn't fried here in France at 3-something in the morning. Um, so uh, Thermage never quite worked the way people would have loved it to work. The results were okay. It was, it was state of the art at the time. But now the Enfraxel, which is a way of getting a deeper laser to the skin without downtime and with minimal risk of injury. But the new one that doctors are talking about, that it's worth looking up on the Internet and considering, is something called Althera. And now I have talked to over... Let's see, specifically four different dermatologists and read uh, a, an article from one uh, that they just, the buzz on the Internet and from the, these doctors I interview and respect their opinion, Althera is like this new kid on the block who's making everybody's job easier because, you know, dermatologists want their patients to walk away happy and come back again for more because they're happy when they left. And uh, Dr. Perry, Dr. Bauman, uh, I, I mean, just uh, several doctors who we work with and talk to uh, just are just are crazy about this machine and what it is that they like about it is that it tightens skin. As a matter of fact, it is one of the few machines that is actually being used on the <laughs> on the underarm when it starts when it starts flabbing around and <laughs> and actually hanging lower than any part of your face hangs and they're actually using Althera to tighten up uh, the underarm as well as the jaw and the neck. It's fascinating. It's interesting. Of course, now I want to line up uh, and get it done. I'm doing more research on it, 
but uh, it's it's one of those things to you know start looking out for when you're looking to, and talking to dermatologists about procedures because Ulthera seems to be that with uh, Fraxel and uh, IPLs an incredible combination uh, to get the brown spots gone and to get the red discoloration gone uh, and to tighten skin. I mean, it's it's those are kind of the powerhouse kids on the block. And then the last thing is sclerotherapy. Now, this isn't about the face as much because, well, they, they do sclerotherapy on the face, but that's mostly about the legs. And as I'm sitting here looking at my legs, unfortunately, like anything with cosmetic corrective procedures, uh, what it corrects doesn't necessarily mean it's permanent. Obviously, when you get the skin tightened, doesn't mean you stop aging. Your skin, your skin is going to continue to sag and lose elasticity. It's not like it stopped the aging. It just took it back a little bit, but it's still moving forward. Sclerotherapy is an injection into the surfaced veins uh, on the face that lasers generally are more effective depending on the size of the vein. But on your legs, sclerotherapy is actually one of the cheaper treatments you can have done. And it makes your leg look young because you get rid of those surfaced veins, those clusters of veins on your legs. And it sometimes only takes two or three treatments, and it's really amazing. I mean, it, uh, so that's my top five list of cosmetic dermatologic procedures to consider. And the last one, I know I said five, but now i just got to say one from a, the dentistry world, get your teeth whitened. At least do it once in life. It's worth it. It is n- nothing makes you look younger like having a beautiful white smile. That's the top list plus one. Did I get to everything? I think I got to everything. That was pretty good. Did I leave Did anything have- out? No, you covered quite the gamut. You didn't talk about microdermabrasion too much. Um, would you want to say oh, what the I, pros or cons of that are? Because I don't like it. Well, there's <laughs> the con. <laughs> <laughs> no, you, it's not that I don't like it. I, that's that's uh, my liking something, although these are the ones I personally like. The research about microdermabrasion and the reason I've never uh, personally had it done, and I don't, it's not that I don't recommend it. I think of it more as a facial it isn't changing. It's really more about the irritation and the swelling. You have to have it done frequently. Uh, the results go away quickly. Whatever results you get, most. Yeah, I've you know some of the places that I have been to, um, you know, for consultations and whatnot. They microdermabrasion really gets the hard sell. It's it's almost because, like it's that extra that you know yeah you're you're consenting to this treatment but oh don't forget that microdermabrasion in between. Well, I think because it's a it, it's an it's an extra upsell that's no downside to the physician. It, there's no downside. There it, microdermabrasion is it makes very little impact. Nobody's going to walk away bruised and unhappy. You're going to be a little swollen and look a little smoother. Pores are going to look a little smaller because your skin is swollen and not terribly so, so you look bad. So there's no downside. I mean, in fact, if you're, if you're into facials, forget the facials and that microdermabrasion. It's, it's temporary, but it makes a difference. But here's the problem is that there is some research. There isn't a lot of research about microdermabrasion, but there is some research that says if you get it done too often, you actually start seeing negative results. You get diminishing results, probably because if you have it done like once a month, that the kind of irritation it causes on a regular basis would eventually cause collagen breakdown. That's the problem with getting it done too often, but it's very tempting to get it done too often because you get that swollen look going, it's cheap, and it makes you look younger temporarily. So if you do want to get it done, it, if of all the facials you can get done, I personally think an alcohol hydroxy acid or a sal- actually salicylic acid peel would be even better once every, you know, depending on the level of depth of the peel, once a qual- you know, once every three to four months versus a microdermabrasion. But, yeah, it's, it's not terrible. Don't get it done too often. I don't know. I'm gonna save up your money for the, for the other stuff, I guess, 
but it's not it's not terrible. I just it's not anything. Doctors consider it a throwaway. It is an upsell. Women want it. It's easy. It's cheap. I've carried on too much about it. Um, there was something else I was going to say. You know, I forgot to mention salicylic acid peels. We'll have to do that for another show. Maybe we can ask Leslie about Dr. Bauman about that in a few weeks. Desiree, let's take our first caller. We've got Lisa from California on the line. Hi, Lisa. Hi, pa- Hi Paula. How are you? Au revoir. You're so lucky. <laughs> No, I was saying goodbye. You mean bonjour or bonsoir? Oh my! There you that. Can you tell no. I haven't been there? I blew it. <laughs> Don't say goodbye just yet. What can I, what can I do for you, Lisa? Thank <laughs> you. Um, Next call. Well, I'm so I'm so glad I got through. Um, I'm 47 and I have extremely dry skin, and I was wondering if there are any of the, the laser treatments that can help the surface of my skin look a little better. Well, it can make it look better, but dry skin, there's, there are no dermatologic procedures like lasers or microdermabrasion uh, that have anything to do with helping or repairing or changing uh, dry skin that I'm aware of. Uh, I, if it's out there, boy, I have not seen any research. Now, if your dryness is from advanced, you said Southern California, right? Right, from LA. I have sun damaged skin. And you know, Paula, I used to bake as a teenager in the sun with baby oil. But I then know. I did stay, you know, and then, but I did stay away from the sun starting in my 20s when I realized what I, I had done. But um, I, I'm paying for it now. So do you feel you have advanced sun damage, Lisa, or just sun damage, just because that's a pretty young age to start staying out of the sun. Um, so how do you feel your skin compares? It, I mean, it just feels very tight. No matter what product I use, I've tried different products, and it always feels tight, especially around my eyes and my cheeks. Are you using any of my products, or have my products not worked for you? You know, I haven't. I'm, I'm pretty new to your, your products in your show, and I'm so glad. Um, I found out about you when I saw your book at the bookstore, and that's how I first heard about you. So I'm pretty so here's, new to here's, everything. Well, 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 we'll get you set up. So some of it is that what I want you to start doing tonight uh, is you you got to have some plant oil somewhere in the house, like olive oil, safflower I, oil, cano- canola do, oil. Yes. Okay. I do use olive so oil, but it doesn't really help it just kind of sits on my skin okay so because you don't use it by itself you got to put your moisturizer on first and then uh-huh. you put the oil a very thin 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 <laughs> layer of <laughs> olive oil or safflower or, or whatever oil you got just a very thin layer over it and you only do it at night and okay. that sealing the fact that it, you feel it left on your skin is actually a very good thing. The trick is is to put it on thin enough that you don't feel like you're, you know, like you're salad dressing. So okay. um, use it, you, but use it tonight. Just keep using it, and then I'm going to send you some of my uh, resist uh, products. I'm going to send you uh, my cleanser. I'm going to send you my toner, which is. Uh, going to be back in stock in a few days, so I know we'll have it to send to you. And I'm going to send you my skin recovery cleanser as well and my skin recovery moisturizer and my skin recovery sunscreen to try. And oh, that's see how those And see how those go for you. If they're not rich enough for you, you know, it's, we are, you know, it's kind of interesting. We are working on what we're going to call our critical care line. You know, there's, there's the kind of skin type you're mentioning that is just – such a difficult skin type to treat um, because that tightness, that dryness, it almost feels like if you don't get something on your face, it's burning. Um, So I'm also going to send you our body butter uh, and my lip balm and and a couple of my antioxidant concentrates, one from my skin recovery line and one from my uh, resist line. That's a, that's a different kind of fluid oil to get on your skin. So I want you to play uh, with some of these different products to see which one. Because, you know, skincare is it, it's just like putting together 
cosmetic corrective procedures to look younger. Skin care, when you have difficult, tricky skin, it sometimes takes experimenting to find what works for you. So we'll send you those products. Um, start with the uh, oil tonight, and, and you don't have to, when you get the my antioxidant concentrates, that would replace the plant oil, and you'll find that that doesn't give you the feeling, your, your, that layered feeling uh, you're talking about. But in the meantime, start that, see how these products work for you, and, um, and then you'll let us know um, if we've helped. If not, uh, then we really need to look into some of the old-styled uh, just getting grease on the face, like, you know, the old-style Eucerin products and uh, sometimes just going, you know, mineral oil, Vaseline, just going back there. I, I, don't, okay. want, I don't want to send you there just yet because I think there's more elegant ways where you can still get the antioxidants to your skin and those really incredible ingredients. So before we go down the old road, which is sometimes what very dry skin needs. Uh, let me see how these new products from my line work for you, and we'll talk later. You're great, Paula. Thank you so much. And can I ask one quick question? I know you've got other callers waiting. Regarding yes, Botox, uh, regarding yes. Botox, if I have allergies, should I be concerned? Is there a way to kind of pre-test it to see how I'll react to it? I've never heard of somebody having a Botox allergy, but that's a medical question that I can't answer. Uh, okay. That's a great question for a dermatologist, though. That, that's, okay. a, that, that's a good question. Now you can say au revoir. Oh, Paula, thank you so much. Au revoir. <laughs> au revoir. <laughs> Just a <right>, next caller. <laughs> next caller is Tina from California. Ooh, we got California tonight. Hi, Tina. How are you? Hi. Hi, Paul. I can't believe this. I finally got on after about six tries. Well, <laughs> but, I'm um, glad to talk to you. First of all, yeah, you're not too far from uh, my hometown, Italy. But um, anyway, first well, of all, I want to... That's not a town. That's actually... Wait, Tina, that's a whole country. Well, Where it's are a you country, from country. Italy? Where are I, you I'm from thinking of Bari. B-A-R-I, Bari. Oh, no, I don't know it's, that. Okay. It's on the Adriatic side down at the uh, heel of the boot. Oh, oh that must be good. Very it's small town. But okay. anyhow, I want to thank you for being you all these years and for educating all of us with so much information and your own information, your personal information. Oh. I really appreciate you. But, oh, thank um, you. Thank, my, thank you. My question for tonight is... Um, could I use a tool called Dermaphile? Are you familiar with the Dermaphile on no, sensitive skin, uh, even though it's really, really grainy and uh, in need of exfoliation? Ooh. Paula, it's a, Dermaphile is a um, skin polishing and resurfacing tool that's made of finely crushed cosmetic diamonds. It basically oh, looks, oh, 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 no. oh. Don't, no? Don't, don't, don't use that at all. Now, oh, you see, still someone did not who wanted that. to sell it to me said it, it's fine for sensitive skin. Oh, bullshit. Oh, God, was I... Oh, oh, oh. Oh, <laughs> oh, my. oh, oh you can I swear you're in France just, now. It's okay. I was just going to say, can I say mail? Do you, will I get in trouble? <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, man. So, oh, I didn't sorry. hear any beep. I didn't okay, hear any so, beep. Yeah, we're yeah, not we'll on be. a five-second delay here. <laughs> oh, oh. Okay. But when you're hearing us, it's live. So, so um, don't, don't, all right, so two things. One is that um, I, it, oh. it, it, on, on a mil, for a million reasons, that is way too irritating and damaging. Do not do oh. that, and specifically do not do that if you have dry, irritated skin. Do not do that. However, okay. I, I would encourage you to consider using Olay's uh, new cleansing brush. Um, uh, I had the clear sonic already. Try the, the well, how's that working for you? Obviously, you well, think it's I not enough or it wouldn't be. No, I can't use it too often because then um, my skin is sensitive and thin, I guess, and then it gets if, pinkish, you know, if get my you cheeks think, get red. If you think the Clarisonic is too strong <laughs> for your skin, this other stuff is going to take you down to the bone. So oh, I um, can't help I, that. <laughs> I do, yeah, don't do that. I do think you might want to consider uh, um, 
the, the Claris, the, the Olay, what we're hearing about the Olay brush um, is that it's soft. It's supposed to be very soft. Brian, have you guys tried that out yet? Uh, no, not yet. It, it, it has been ordered. I've actually, um, I've seen a, a sample of it uh, at, at Ulta. They had one and they, they let me uh, get a sense of how the brush feels. I didn't actually use it. There wasn't a sink there and, you know, washing your face in public isn't the most <laughs> yeah, no, don't do. Yeah. Brian, I know you're dedicated to your job, but you don't have to do that. So, <laughs> how did how did it feel? How did it feel? It's really it's yeah. it's very it's very soft. In fact, I, having having experienced the Clarisonic before, um, I, I think that they're comparable. Um, not having the two right next to each other, I wouldn't go on record in saying that Olay's is softer, but they're so similar and it just just if nothing else from a budgetary standpoint you may, if you're curious about what this could do for your cleansing routine spend the $30 on Olay and don't bother with $200 for Clarisonic. Mm -hmm. So okay. Let's just go back Tina, let's just go back a little bit. So okay. Clarisonic's too strong, the dermophile is going to be beyond strong. Uh, yes. so what are you trying to achieve with the brush? What do you want for that. I don't I, I don't care about the brush. I don't care about the brush. I just want my skin to be uh, smooth again, like across my forehead. I could get my fingernails and kind of just feel, you know, the sand, the sandy little part. Tina, how, how old are you, Tina? I'm a tour, but I look like 30 years younger. <laughs> oh, come on, no, Tina, I, give me your age. Come on, come on, come on. No. That's up. I'm, way, I'm way, way, way up there. Um... I'm way yeah, up but there, but I haven't had any surgery, and um, Give me a doctors Tina, I can't help age me. Tina, uh, Tina, I can't over, help over you. 70. Okay, over well, you 70. Are over 70. Okay, over 70. Oh, you are over 70. You've got the youngest So here's what the uh, problem is. Okay, now, uh -huh. now, let me tell you why age sometimes uh, is a skin type. It's rarely a skin type. But oh. if you've had sun damage and you're older, and, of course, who of us, gets to be 70 and hasn't had sun damage. One of the things mm -hmm. that starts happening is skin stops reproducing, you know, uh, like it did. You make less skin cells. Yes. Um, and then the skin cells you do have are rough. So it's a trickier skin type. And oh. exfoliating that skin away, you can't do it. Once you go over a certain age, that kind of manual exfoliation is a no-no. And so oh. I just realized that I was giving you information that I needed to, I needed to have, gosh, forgive me. Mm -hmm. It's really early in the morning here. Uh, I needed to, you don't need to brush away your dry skin. Here's, here's, what, I'm, here's what I want you to do. Okay. Um, there's definitely other products out there on the market, but I, I don't have, I, I'm, I'm just going to give you some of my uh, skin recovery uh, cleanser, and my resist cleanser, I want you to experiment with both of those. And okay. I want you to exper experiment with my 1% BHA lotion and my 2% oh. BHA lotion, but I only want you to start with the 1%. Some okay. of it is, is that your skin is not coming off. Your initial mm -hmm. inclination that you've got to get that skin off is a good one. The way you're going about it is the wrong direction. You need okay. to just... Get that surface layer off gently, a 1% beta-hydroxy acid, the active ingredient is salicylic acid. We'll get it off for you in a lotion form. It's moisturizing. I'd like you to give that a try. Start out by using it every other night. Use the cleanser okay. and the toner, and then I'm also going to include uh, the skin recovery sunscreen and uh, the skin recovery moisturizer, as well as my antioxidant skin recovery concentrate. I want you to play with those. I think you will fall in love with me and be able to go and tell everybody that you're 70 and now you really do look like you're 40. I'm teasing. I'm being exaggerating. But well, no, I, that, just, that, I, that sounds wonderful. In fact, uh, I, I've used your products up till a couple of years ago when I started getting facials and they insisted I start using their line. And But I want you to know that while I was using your product, I used to carry around cards with your name and your phone number because you, didn't, you weren't online yet and because everybody wanted to know what I used on my skin because I looked so young and never had had surgery. 
And, okay, well, um, we're going to send you some more stuff. You can still so get now your facials. If, you can still get your facials if you want, but let's get you back on uh, taking care of your skin and do not try to scrub it away. And okay. Tina, stay young. You're doing very good. Thank you so much. I'm taking the liberty for all of us to say we love you, Paula. <laughs> you too. Yeah, Paula, God bless. Too. Take care. Uh, okay, thank yes. you. Take care. Bye-bye, Tina. Desiree, do we have – oh, we're doing good on time. Desiree, next call. Yeah. We've got we've Shirley got from Canada on the line. Shirley? Yes. Oh, Shirley, there. you're on the speakerphone. No, I'm not. It off? Okay, I'm not I'm on the speakerphone. A okay, go ahead. I'm hearing – no, yeah, I'm hearing an echo. Everybody's <laughs> echoing. We we might need to skip Shirley's call. Yeah, right. Shirley, let's take her as via email, Desiree, because it's just not sounding, okay. well, sounding kind of odd. <laughs> All right, let's go to Bobby in California. So, hi, Paula. Desiree, been... let's, hi, Bob. I'll, let's make sure. We... I'll get Sorry? Shirley's question via email. I'll get Shirley's question via email. We can okay. go on to Bobby. Thank you. And who am I talking to now? Bobby from Bobby. California. Hi. Oh, I've been following you for years. Bobby, B-O-B-B-I-E. Okay, got it. Hi, Bobby. What's going on? Hi. Um, I had laser skin resurfacing about a year ago. And it's from a, a doctor. I used to actually work in the hospital, and he's got a very, very good reputation. Um, and he's done other things, and they've been great. But um, And my skin, by the way, is very thin and light. I'm um, 62. And what happened, though, with that um, surgery, I'm not sure whether it's the kind you referred to or not. It was a year ago. I'm not sure if the if Sierra was if it was around then. But um, And my skin is very good, by the way, really good and good condition. I've had surgeries, and I always get, I always survive quite well. But this time, it left some dark marks on my skin. Not really terribly, terribly noticeable, but some dark marks. And I wonder if that's, you've heard of that happening before and what caused it. Yeah. And you know, did you go back to the dermatologist who did your laser and ask them about this? You know, I didn't. I should have, of course. Oh, oh. You know, we are. We're afraid of our doctors. I, what I is And you know what it is, is we don't want to fight. We don't want to go back and they, you know, the worst thing is, well, I've never seen this before. You want to take your fist and go, well, now you've seen this. Let me, you know, what is that? Mm -hmm. You've never seen it before. What am I like? The, uh, there's a billion, pe you know, billions of people on the planet. I, it's not possible you're the only one. It's just they're limited. Okay, I'm carrying on too much. I'll stop. So you do need to talk to that dermatologist. You really need to get a second opinion because it's hard for me to say why that did or, or didn't happen, you know, was the frequency too high, you know, did you go in the sun too soon afterwards, you know, one of the things that, uh, you know, doctors need to be really good about, in fact, I, I really love doctors that say that they only do certain procedures at certain times of the year because they know that you will be out in the sun less, or they make you sign something that says you're not going to go out in the sun without, you know, like a layer of zinc oxide for, you know, for days and weeks and weeks until you heal. Because sometimes it isn't the machine, it's, it's, how, it's what happened afterwards that you went out in the sun and, you know, your skin is that much more vulnerable after uh, some of these procedures are done. So um, that they're still there is what's worrisome. They should go away. So, there, and then, the, and I know it sounds crazy to say, well, you know, this machine caused them, but if there are certain kinds of brown discolorations, other machines get rid of that. And the doctor should do that for oh. free. So, oh, okay. you know, it, it's, uh, it's hard to say exactly, but you need to talk to the doctor. And depending on the kind of discoloration you're talking about, you know, you you get it corrected. You you get it taken care of, and um, and you're good about wearing sunscreen. And have you tried any? Absolutely. Uh, so now, are these are these brown marks like like brown, like like they look like sun damage marks, or uh, um, they're they're what, faint. You know, I'm, I'm, they're they're not terribly terribly noticeable. They're faint, and and they're and they're brown in color. 
No, they're not round. What, actually, what happened is that when he did around my nose, um, he yeah. the, the right around like especially under my nose where it's red, I have rosacea. It, right. Um, it, it's it's just like a, a little bit of brown underneath my nose and around my nose. Okay. Definitely have definitely have this doctor evaluate that. And I guess I'm going to guess that he, that they are going to suggest an IPL or give you some hydroquinone, uh, which actually isn't the best in rosacea, but hydroquinone uh, is an option. Uh, you know, one of the things, uh, uh, Bobby, what I want to do, we're working on an alternative. Oh, I hate saying this because then I'm going to get like a million emails. We're working on an alternative product for skin lightening uh, to hydroquinone. Uh, it's not going to work as well as hydroquinone. Hydroquinone is state-of-the-art. Uh, but we, make sure, Bobby, that uh, you get uh, Desiree gets your email, and we'll put you on our list to send you uh, one of the prototypes we're working on. Uh, and you can play after, after you talk to your doctor. After you okay. talk to your doctor, you find out what's going on with your cute nose. So, Bobby, tell me your skin type. Let me send you some Paula's Choice products. What's your skin type? It's very dry. Um, well, we got a lot of dry white. women. I'm a, I'm, a le- I'm a natural blonde, or at least I was. <laughs> and <laughs> so we're gonna send you. I'm gonna send you a set of my uh, skin recovery products to play with, and uh, see how they heal your skin. And you need to consider that same trick with the plant oil until you get my antioxidant concentrate. Bobby, take care and let me know. Email Desiree and let me know uh, what your doctor says about those. That, those the brown marks under your nose. Yeah, well, thank you so much. And, you know, I have been following you for years and years and years and years and years. And you, um, I and I really do appreciate your work because you you are just so informative. And, uh, uh, I don't know, it, it, it's just really wonderful to be able to not have to do that. Thank you. Thank you. Desiree, next caller. All, all right, our next caller is Leah from Massachusetts. Hello? Say the, say the name Leah, again. Leah. Leah. <laughs> Leah. Hello? Hi, Leah. It's Paula. Hi, Paula. Great to talk to you. Uh, my Thank question you. is, um, I am inundated with these skin tags everywhere. And, I know. Um, I just paid a No, they're the easiest thing to get rid of. They are I the know. Easiest. But um, the dermatologist but. considers it a cosmetic procedure, so... For $150, they'll snip as many as they can in like 10 or 15 minutes. But I was wondering if there was some sort of like laser procedure or... No, nah, no. Nah. Well, know? first of all, laser is, laser is vastly more um, expensive. I mean, I'm telling you, this is a easy... This is like an like an intern who's just had one year of, you know, of anatomy class can snip off. Oh, I know, it's like but it's the just the number of them, you know. So right. So, so now there are some doctors when you, when they they have as many as you're saying, uh, sometimes cauterize them off. They burn them off. Mm-hmm. Um, but that would be a decision that uh, the dermatologist uh, would have to make. I'd get a second opinion, and mm-hmm. cause there, there are especially depending on your skin color, uh, they cauterize it. I, I do. I I don't, I don't even know if I've seen any research about lasers uh, for skin tags. Or like a chemical you know, peel. Or, I don't know. I just thought there might be something a little bit more now, time I, they, efficient. I, they, <laughs> they cauterize. I do know that some doctors uh, cauterize, uh, you know, burn them off as opposed to snip them off. But you'd be surprised how fast it goes. And I mean, I mean. What if I bought it and just did them myself? I bet I'm so not going to touch. <laughs> but having said that, I'm not going to say anything. I snip mine. Okay. I mean, not the ones that are really attached, but the ones that are hanging that are disgusting. Yeah. I don't have time to go see a dermatologist every time. But I would never recommend anybody else on God's earth do that because mm-hmm. I'm a crazy woman. But yeah, I mean, it's <laughs> nothing. It's just nothing. It is such a. And I mean, you'll ble- it bleeds, and you have yeah. to disinfect it. You got to use a sterilized. Not that you should do this. In fact, nobody should do this. I don't want to get letters that people bled all over their bathroom. But it's <laughs> it's 
so easy. It's so I know. easy. I know. I just thought there was a more time time con, time efficient way. <laughs> now, now it's flipping or cauterizing is is all I know of. Leah, what uh, what's your what's your skin type? Let me send you some Paula's Choice products. Uh, normal normal to dry. Well, I only have normal to dry ladies tonight. <laughs> uh, we'll send you a set of my. Well, should I do something different? Let me send you some of my skin, uh, my uh, moisture boost. Uh, no, nah, never mind. My skin recovery is the best for your skin type. I'll send you a set of my skin recovery uh, skincare products for uh, dry skin, and you'll uh, tell me how you do with them. Leah, thank you for calling thank here. Thank you. Can I just have one more quick question? Sure. When Real is quick. you resist SPF coming out? I wasn't supposed to mention that. I don't think till May. When is it coming out? When is it coming out? Desiree? I'm dying to try it. <laughs> well, if anyone who's a fan on Facebook is actually going to get an exclusive sneak peek at it coming up in the next couple of weeks here. So follow us on Facebook, okay, and we'll know. let you know. All right, you'll see an Thanks. exclusive sneak peek, and for everyone else, you'll see it in May. Thank you. <laughs> I'll see my friend on Facebook. Thanks, Leah. Take care, dear. Thank you, Paula. Bye-bye. Okay, bye-bye. So what do we have? We have three minutes left. Could I maybe get one one call? What do you think? Oh, one call? We're going to have no? to make it fast. Okay, let's, let's go try. to Rebecca in California. Rebecca. Talk Hi. Hi. Quick, quick, quick. Hi, Paula. Hi. <laughs> I have a question. Um, I... I you know, usually don't go to the dermatologist because I, I don't really can't afford it. Um, but I was wondering um, for scarring other than discoloration, but having you know a, a texture scar from acne, what is the best way to get that smoothed out? Okay, they're really uh, it's hard. It's hard. Um, oh God, that is a big discussion. So I'm just gonna I just I'm just gonna send you some product. Um, we, we did talk about scarring for acne on another show, so if you can look at some of the archives. But the okay. best way to deal with it, uh, if you can't see a dermatologist, but I would save up to it because there are lasers and treatments that really do lift up and puff out some of those, those scarrings. But the best thing okay. you can do is a 2% BHA uh, salicylic acid-based product. I'm going to send you a couple of mine, my gel and my liquid, uh, to get you started. Um, but save your money. Stop, stop wasting it on skincare products that don't work. And, yeah. uh, but it, there really are lasers out there and, and uh, that just make a huge difference. Thank you for calling, Rebecca. Take care. So, yeah, thank Desiree, you so much. Take care, dear. Desiree and Brian, two minutes left, and I can go to bed. It's almost four in the morning oh, here okay. in, I know, in the south of France. Uh, I'm wondering what I'm going to have for dinner tomorrow night because, <laughs> you know, that's by French cooking. Um, and I'm having a wonderful time. I do miss you guys. i got to tell you, I don't miss the weather in Seattle, but I do miss you guys. We and you um, yeah. Oh, I'm, you do miss me a lot. So uh, next week we're going to be talking with uh, Mikkel M- Misha. Brian, I never can men- remember this beautiful woman's name. Mikhail, Mikkel Mitchell. What's her name, Boxall? She, uh, when I spoke with her, she pronounced it Michelle. I think she's just, it's just a fancy okay. way to spell I'm, Michelle. Okay, I'm, I'm typing an I in here, uh, an I in here because her name is with that apostrophe. How, how do you pronounce an apostrophe? Michelle Boxall is a celebrity makeup artist. She's going to tell us everything we need to know about putting on our makeup and looking gorgeous. All these tips, all the just stuff you've never heard of before. We're going to share it with you. And then on the 21st, I'm really excited to have Dr. Leslie Bauman on, author of The Skin Type Solutions. She's an amazing woman, one of the true, uh, you know, just a dermatologist with a mission to be honest and share information. Uh, She has an interesting viewpoint on skincare. She's great to discuss things with. We'll challenge her with some new research about uh, different kinds of, uh, some of the things we've been talking about, lasers for acne and, and just, oh, I, uh, tons of stuff, tons of stuff. And then the week after that on the 28th, this is one of my favorite shows, we're going to talk about five secrets to keeping your hair younger, anti-aging tips for your hair. I'm going to shock. I'm going to shock you with this one. You're not going to be happy with me on some of them, but I promise if you just listen out of the five, 
if you just listen to two or three, you are going to think I am incredibly cool. I am Paula Beacom, <laughs> the cosmetics cop, keeping you beautifully informed. Desiree Stordahl and Brian Barron. Stay well so we can talk next week. Take care. Blog Talk Radio, where millions of hosts and listeners gather.